still need to hear that Christ is the Lord. People still need to hear it's God's word that they've been looking for. People still need to hear that their lives can see the break of day. People still need to hear that Christ is Take your Bibles and go to Psalm 47, please. Tonight we're going to continue in Man's Day, Part 2. Part 1 of this teaching, we saw how a minister was to interact and serve his congregation. We learned that the people belong to God, not to the minister. We learned that a minister is to share God's provisions and treasures with them. We saw that a minister is also a steward. And as a steward, he must first and foremost be faithful to God. That means he must first and foremost please God. He's not to be concerned with other think of him, other people. Because if you're going to work for God, you're going to get yourself in some trouble. Like I said, if you're going to make an omelet, you've got to break some eggs. In 1 Corinthians 4, you don't have to go there, we saw that Paul said, it's a small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Man's judgment. We learned that the word judgment in the Greek is himera, and it literally is translated 355 other times in the New Testament by the word day. It's not judgment, so to speak. It's man's day where he does the judging. Man's day. Today is man's day. It's a time where man makes the rules and he is the judge. You remember about the Cleveland Indians, Albert Bell, I told you about his bat and how the bat was drilled and it was corked and the umpires found out about it and they got a hold of it and they made judgment on that which I don't know how many games he got thrown out of but you're in Psalm 47 in verse 7 it says for God is the king of all the earth Sing ye praises with understanding. God is the king of all the earth. You know what that means? That means that there's nobody above God. He's the king. Psalm 95, please. Psalm 95, verse 3. For the Lord is a what? Great. great God. And a what? Great King above all gods. Okay? He's not just a king. He's a great God and he's a great king. And he's above how many gods? Oh. Everybody. And anybody that sets themselves up in competition with God is placing themselves as a god. Competition is good if you play football, if you play soccer, if you play baseball. But there's one thing that God doesn't like. He doesn't like competition because competition equals idolatry. And when people want to compete with God, they want to say that they know more and they know better than God. Look at Psalm 89, please. Psalm 89, beginning, verse 11 says, The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded it. 
God is the great king. He's the boss. You ever watch NCIS? Gibbs? You know what they call him? Boss. You know why? Because he's the boss. He's the king of the earth. He's the king above every other king. He's the king above every other man and every other god. And the heavens and the earth and the world and the fullness thereof belong to God. That's who they belong to. Everything belongs to God. Psalm 89 verse 6. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? And who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? The answer is nobody. Verse 7. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. He's to be feared. He's to be respected. Because he is the great one. And especially, this should manifest itself in the assembly of the saints, of his people. And he is to be had in reverence of all of them that are what? Yeah. You're supposed to respect God. You're supposed to hold God in reverence in the church. O Lord, God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee? Or to thy faithfulness round about thee. Thou rollest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. You saw Jesus Christ do that. Thou hast broken Rahab, or Egypt is what that means, in pieces as one that is slain. Egypt was a great power. You know the story. And God broke them. Thou hast scattered thine enemies with a strong arm, with thy strong arm. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. See? It's like, like you go in my driveway and that little red puddle jumper is mine. Okay? God said, the heaven's mine, the earth's mine, everything's mine. Everything's mine. The north, the south, thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm, strong is thy hand. And high is thy right hand. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy what? Face. Face. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. The New International Version translates verse 14 as this. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. The foundation on which the throne of God rests is twofold. Psalm 89, 14 says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Righteousness and justice is the foundation. It's the foundation on which the throne or the rulership or the government, if you will, of God rest upon. Now, if you're going to build something, you have to start with a good foundation. If your foundation is faulty, inconsistent, or damaged, whatever you endeavor to build upon that foundation will bear the consequences of that deficiency. Now, when I was... A few years back, younger, I used to wrestle. And there are three periods, if you make it through the three periods in wrestling. Your first period, you stand up and you go at each other on your feet. Your second period, somebody picks up, somebody picks down. When you go down, 
okay? What you do, you squat like a German Shepherd, squats a taunch, and you place your arms down like this. This is called your post, okay? You don't do this. You don't do this. You put both of your posts down. And if you've ever been to a wrestling match, I'm talking about a real wrestling match. If you ever hear, get the post, get the post, the other guy that's on top, that's the first thing he's going to go to, unless the guy's going to stand up. He's going to sweep the post. Because once you sweep the post, now you have a faulty foundation, and you start to teeter. Okay? The throne of God rests on two posts. One is righteousness, the other is justice. These two posts work together. If either of these two posts are damaged or removed, the righteousness and or the justice of God will be compromised. Once this happens, the word of God will be attacked and the word of God will be altered. Now the foundation on which the throne of God rests is upon righteousness and justice. His throne is here and the foundation that it sits on is righteousness and justice. Not just righteousness, but righteousness and justice. Not just justice, but justice and righteousness. You cannot have the one without the other and expect it to work. What is righteousness? Very simply, righteousness is what God says is right. Now, there's a famous professional wrestler. His real name is Dwayne Johnson. He's known by his wrestling name as The Rock. And he was a heavy late champion of the world. Now, every professional wrestler has a certain persona they take on when they go into the ring. Now, when The Rock would do an interview, or he would verbally joust with an opponent, he had this little thing he liked to do, this little thing he's well known for saying. He intimidate the other person and egg him on and egg him on and egg him on, and he let him talk and talk and talk. And then in the middle of his conversation, he stop him and he get real serious and he ask him a question. And he lead into his question and he asked a question. And the other guy would stop, he would listen to the question. And then just as the other guy was about to open his mouth and answer the question, do you know what The Rock would do? He'd raise his voice, he'd grab the microphone from the other guy, and he says, The Rock doesn't care what you think. Or he'd say something like this, It doesn't matter what you think. And he'd throw the microphone down and whack the guy. You see, righteousness is what God says is right. And you know what? It doesn't matter what you think because he's God. It doesn't matter what your college professor taught you is right. It doesn't matter if you feel like it's right. It doesn't matter if you were raised to believe something else was right. It doesn't even matter if the church says it's right. The only thing that matters is what God says is right. God alone is the one who gets to define what right and wrong is. Now you can rebel against that. You can say that God doesn't know what he's talking about, and many people do today. However, when you do that, you put yourself with odds against God. And the only person you're hurting is you. Whatever God says is right is what? Right. 
right? Right. Likewise, whatever God says is wrong is what? Wrong. wrong. You don't have a say in it. That's just the way it is. It's that simple. Now, you may not like that. You may not agree with it. And you may not feel it. But that's just too bad. Because that's just the way it is. Let's take a law of God, for instance. A law that God established since the foundation of the world. The law of density. The law of density, very briefly, says that the density of an object determines whether it will float or whether it will sink in water. It's just that simple. That's a law. That's a God-made law. Now suppose you hear that and you disagree with it. And you don't believe in the law of density that God created. And you're young. And you grew up in this progressive, cocky generation. And you tell density, density, I don't believe in you. As a matter of fact, I don't even like you. I'm a woke individual. I can think for myself. And as far as I'm concerned, density, you don't exist. And furthermore, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cancel you. So you know what you do? You go to your Twitter account. And you serve notice on density in front of the entire Twitter population that you have canceled density. You do the same with your Facebook account and every other social media platform that you have. Because you're fed up with it and you want the world to know that density is a lie and that you are going to single-handedly cancel density. And lo and behold, CNN gets an anonymous tip about your righteous crusade. How you now are on prime time. And the world and everybody knows that you have called out density. So you challenge density in front of the whole world. You challenge it to a duel, like in the Old West. You travel from college campus to college campus, bad-mouthing density, degrading density. You tell density that you refuse to accept its law, you refuse to accept its creator, and that you rebel and you rebuke against density, and you rebuke his creator, and you call density and his creator a hater. And you're going to prove to the entire world, to the universe, that density is nothing but an old wise tale. There's nothing to it. And in your woke, diverse, progressive generation, in your teaching, you have had enough with density. And you're not going to stand for this density anymore. And you refuse to have it taught in our schools and preached to our children because you're going to teach them something different. So you challenge density to a throwdown. You know what you do? You get a pair of lead boots, size 13E. And as you jump into the ocean to prove once and for all that density is a big lie, and as you sink to the bottom of a dark, freezing crypt, trying to remove those lead boots with your last dying breath, do you think density gives a rat's tail about what you think? The answer is no. And as the Coast Guard retrieves your lifeless, fish-gnawed corpse off the floor of the ocean, do you think that now density is going to change? that you now have density's attention? No. Why? Because it's a law. And the law of density says anything with a density greater than one will sink in what? Water. Understand? Likewise, God's throne sits on the foundation of righteousness and judgment. You don't get a say 
in what God has established to be right and wrong. You understand? Whatever God decides, that's it. No debate. He's the boss. He doesn't want and he doesn't care about your opinion. That's the end of the conversation. But people are brazen today, disrespectful today, to think that they could approach the creator of the heavens and the earth and say, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm not a boy. I'm a girl. That's the height of ignorance. Disrespect. I'm going to show you three things that God has formed and I would like for you to consider. The first thing is formed is the world. Psalm 90 verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth or even as formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. God formed the world. The second thing he formed was he formed the earth to be inhabited. Isaiah 45, 18, Thus saith the Lord, the creators of the heavens, God himself who formed the earth and made it, he established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. Inhabited. He formed the world, he formed the earth specifically for it to be inhabited, and the third thing that he formed was in Genesis 2, 7, was man. The Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground. So God did all this. And then he formed the man, and you know where he put the man? On the earth. On the earth. It wasn't the other way around. Would you listen to these people today? You think it's the other way around. Look at Romans chapter 9, please. I'm going to read this to you out of the NIV. Romans 9, verse 20. But who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed saying to him who formed it, why did you make me that way? You see, this trash is not new. This is written a couple thousand years ago. They were having problems back then. Caesar, he wanted to be God. He wanted to be worshipped as God. He set himself up in competition to God. It's been going on because the heart of man is evil. The thoughts of man were all evil continually. See? Man can't fix anything. The only thing man can do is screw it up. And then man has the brazen audacity to say to God, you don't know what you're talking about. And you get these educated idiots that teach in the colleges, that teach our children. There's 97 genders. Those people should be taken out and horse whipped. They got no brains. And they're lauded as the academia of our time. To sit, when you go to college today, one thing that college teaches you what to do is college teaches you how not to think. Years ago, college used to teach you how to think, how to solve problems, how to solve equations. Today, college teaches you, you do not think, you listen, and you mimic what I say. That's what college is today. It's a breeding ground for the devil. And the people who are pushing gender confusion and the perversion of the LGBTQ in the church, God is to be respected among the what? Saints. Remember we read that? They're pushing this stuff in the church. They have turned their back on God. That's what they have done. Now, I don't care if you like that or not. That is the simple truth. And a lot of people can't handle the truth. They have turned their back on God. They have told God, get out of here. This is what we want. They have pushed God right out of the congregation. 
who do they think they are to contradict it is written? Okay. Who gave them that thought? Who gave them that brazenness? Where does this rebellion and hatred come from? Now you know the answer. It's about time that the real church of Jesus Christ would stand up and stand firm on the truth that God has given us. And that truth is it is written. And that's not going to make you popular. But you can be a coward and you can turn your back on God with the rest of them if you want. But when you stand before your Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have to explain that to him. And I'm not threatening you. I'm just telling you that the peer pressure from the bogus church and the bogus church friends you think you have is from the pit of hell. It's either the word or it's not the word. It's either the truth or it's not the truth. You got full-fledged congregations flying gay flags in the name of love. That's not love. You know what the Bible says love is? For this is the love of God that we do His commandments. 1 John. And His commandment doesn't teach that. Jesus Christ was beat. He was mocked. He was crucified so that you could have the word of God. He went through all the hard things. And he gave us the word and he said, occupy till I come. You got to protect it. He was willing to go to the cross for his father's word. Are you willing to speak up for the truth of the gospel? Let's close in Romans 1. Romans 1. It should be said of you. Verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, the Jew and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is what? Written. The just shall live by faith. For therein, for therein where? The gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For therein that gospel, the word that's in that gospel, is the righteousness of God, what? Revealed. That's what righteousness is. It's revealed in the gospel. It's not what I say is right. It's not what Reverend so-and-so says is right, or the Pope says it was right. What is right is what it says in the Word of God. And God doesn't care about what you think. He doesn't want your opinion. He didn't call you up to get your okay. He knows what He's doing. He formed the universe. He created the earth. He formed it to be inhabited. He made man. And you think he needs you to tell him what he's doing? But yet, daily in pulpits around the world and in our government, people are daily telling God what he's doing wrong and how it should be done. And you wonder why we got chaos in this country? Because we have turned our back on God and we have walked away from God. And you know what God does when someone does that to you? Read it in Romans. He says, is that what you want? Then fine, I'll give you up. Have at it. See what the world's like without me. You got all the answers? You got it all figured out? Have at it. See what the world's like without me. And then you have problems. And then you got laws. And then you got statutes. And you got judgments because you got to fix all these problems. And they just keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And you'll never fix them. You'll never fix them because you have turned your back on the one who has given you the right way to run a country, the right things for your life. What God said is right for your life is right. And he said that it's one man, one woman. That's what he said. It don't matter what you say. It don't matter how many organizations you make. It don't matter how many TV shows you have about it. 
It doesn't matter. God don't care. You got it? That's just the way it is. You think he's a mean guy? He don't care. I'm here to tell you he don't care. He only cares about his word. And if you're going to walk away from his word, then you know what? You walk away from God. God's way is the best way. God's way is the only way. And God doesn't want competition, and he doesn't need competition. God doesn't need a Congress to vote on a law and tell him what he should do. God doesn't need a Senate to have a hearing to tell him what he should do and what he shouldn't do. Okay? God's the one who made man. Without God, they wouldn't have a Senate. Yeah. The reason why we have so much confusion and madness in the world today is not because of the White House. It's because of the church house. Because had the church done its job and taught the people God's word, then the people would have voted biblical values and not their party's values. When construction began on the Tower of Pisa over 800 years ago, Workers immediately ran into a soil-related foundation issue. Work stopped for nearly a century due to political unrest in Italy. I gotta tell you this story. So this Italian comes in the garage today. And he, he plays the Italian card with me. And he says, bleh, 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 bleh. You, what do you? He said, you're Italian? I said, no. I said, I'm American. He said, your father Italian? I said, he's American too. He said, my grandfather came in. I said, Italian? He said, I'm Italian. I said, no, I'm an American. Oh, okay. He says, well, I was up in New York. And we were at this, if I heard the name again, I could recognize it. It was a real fancy hotel. We had this weekend, whatever. Now it's Thursday. Okay. It's not Monday, it's Thursday, he had this weekend thing. So, he says, no, you, you, he's talking in broken English. He said, oh, you, you Americans, you, you, you go tax, a tax, a tax. He says, so my company, they give me this coat, leather coat. And if I take it back to Italy with me, I got to pay tax on it. He says, I stopped here and I saw your name on the building. And I thought, maybe I could sell you this leather coat for a good price. <laughs> now, he don't pay tax on anything he wears when he goes back to Italy. He don't take, pay tax on what's in his suitcase, if there's a coat or a pair of pants, when he goes back to Italy. He thinks he's talking to a student, right? So I said, I don't want a coat. It's a nice coat. It'll give you a good deal. I said, look at me. I'm a garage rat. I don't wear leather. Don't you ever go out? I said, no. You sure you don't want to? I said, no, you need to leave now. And he left. Unrest in Italy. No extra charge. Thought I'd throw that in. The work stopped for nearly a century because of political unrest in Italy. But construction continued in 1272 despite the tower's famous stature. Attempts to compensate the poor soil quality failed numerous times. Today, the tower continues to its downward descent. However, it's a much slower pace due to foundational repairs. Once the foundation is compromised, the downward descent of people or a government or a nation will soon follow. God's throne, God's judgment, God's rule rest on righteousness and justice. Once those two principles are compromised in our country, what is right, and you see that being compromised all the time, and what is just. There is injustice in our country by the bagfuls. Two people can get 
arrested for the same crime. And because this person has the ability to gather this much attorney and this person doesn't, same crime, same everything, everything. This person over here can get two years in prison. This person over here gets off with six months probation. That's not equal justice. You see, our justice system has been compromised and righteousness has been compromised. I said to Carmen today, now all of a sudden, because the Republicans are in charge of the House, now all of a sudden, they're going to open up an investigation to Hunter Biden. If Hunter Biden is guilty, he was guilty two years ago when they broke that story. But for two years, because a certain party dominated the House, they suppressed that. That's not justice. That's not justice. Why is it now a crime when it wasn't a crime to be investigated two years ago? Can anybody answer me that? You know why you can't answer that? Because there is no answer to that. It's cover-up. If there was a crime, why was it not a crime two years ago and it's a crime today when the same laws have applied? Now, I understand when you change laws, but the same laws have applied. And that's the country we live in. That's the one that says, in God we trust, one nation under God. You can print that till you're blue in the face. You turn your back on God and walk away from God. You think that means something? It means nothing. And I don't mean to be mean. I'm just telling you. People disrespect your father. You don't let them do that. You don't let them talk that way about your God. You don't hang out with those kind of people. And then they're going to force their point of view on you and cancel you if you don't agree. That's what they did to Jesus Christ. They forced their point of view on Jesus Christ, gave him an ultimatum, and he didn't agree, so they canceled him. And praise God they canceled him because you and I get to sit here tonight because of his love for us. In part three of this teaching, we'll begin to look at some contemporary examples of the decay in our nation. And as we continue to go on, we'll see how we can fix them. Amen? Amen. Thank you for listening to Chapter and Verse Ministry. We have newsletters, articles, podcasts, and videos posted on our website at www.cvm.church. We also post videos regularly on Rumble and on BitChute. Don't forget to like our video and to hit the bell icon if you want to know when another video is coming out. Harvest is plentiful. Where are the laborers, my friend? The laborers are few. A chance to turn the darkness unto light. Where are the men who fight? My friend, it must begin with me and you. Me and you. See the break of day. People still need to hear that Christ is the way. How can they call a 
Padua In whom they've not believed How can they hear Except a man oh, Tells them of all the riches That they deserve My friend We've been called out to serve The bread of life And to make it hurt So let's make it hurt People still need to hear God's word that they've been looking for. People still need to hear that their lives can't see the break of day. People still need to hear that Christ is the way. People still need to hear that Christ is the Lord. word that they've been looking for. People still need to hear that their lives can't see the break of day. People still need to hear that Christ is the way. People still need to hear. People still need to Hey